Hey, how's it going everyone? I hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to another video. In this video, I want to talk about positioning. So relative positioning versus absolute positioning. And one of my subscribers asked me, could I explain it? And I'll try to do the best I can to explain it, but it's kind of confusing, I think. So if that is something that you seem like you're interested in learning about, be sure to stick around. So what I have coded up for you on code pin right here is I have an outer div, I have a wrapper div, which is the pink, the outer is yellow, and then I have a box one and a box two. Box one is the blue and box two is the orange. So I'm going to go ahead and start with relative positioning. So basically what relative positioning is, is basically it's telling the DOM to take the element and move it either up, down, left, or right based on where it was originally fixed onto the page. So in this case, this orange box was put right here. We see where my cursor is, this top left corner. That is where it was originally going to be placed on the page. So if I go over here and I change the position to relative, and let's say I just wanted to bring it up 10 pixels or something, I could say top negative 10 pixels, and that'll bring up the orange box from its relative position. So again, in this case, it used to be um, displayed here without any altercations, but now it's moved up. And you can also move it to the left. So I can say left 20 pixels, and that'll pull it over to the left. I mean, that'll push it over to the right, or I could add a negative to pull it over to the left. If I could actually type the negative here. Okay. So that is kind of what a relative does. It says, give me this DOM element and move it around based on where it was originally going to be on the page. So that's great. And you can do some cool stuff with that. The only issue is, is if, you're, if I were to add, let's say another box one, notice that it's going to be positioned probably out here, okay? Because this orange div was still taking up the space behind the scenes. Like this orange div takes up this full width. So when you add another element, it's going to still think that it needs to be placed here. So just keep that in mind. It's kind of strange behavior, but once you get used to it, you can kind of understand how relative positioning works. I guess you could say it doesn't really affect the normal layout of your page. Um, it just kind of moves the the skeleton is still there, but the, you know, the skin is moved, if that makes sense. <laughs> That's probably a bad analogy. So let's go ahead and move on to absolute positioning. If I didn't already confuse you with relative, what absolute positioning is, is basically it says, look at my parent wrappers or my parent divs or my parent DOM elements and find the first one that has a position that is set to something other than the default. Okay, so for example, what we typically do is we will try to set a position relative on one of the parent containers and then the children inside that can be positioned absolute. So just to kind of show you that I'm going to give this position of absolute to box two and that'll pull it up. But what we actually want to do is if we can give it a left of zero pixels and a top of zero pixels, you'll notice that it's going to um, pull it up to the top left of the yellow div. And the only reason this is working is because I have a position of relative on the outer div here. If I were to move this position relative and put it on, let's say the wrapper, it would actually pull up that orange box and position it absolute based on that, that pink wrapper div. And if neither of these wrappers or containers had position relative, well, guess what? It just pulls it up to the top left of the entire page. So this is kind of strange behavior and it's good to understand, but it's it's really good to be able to like position all these things absolute based on a smaller container. And then that smaller container can be positioned absolute based on its parent container, et cetera, et cetera. So it gives you some like some flexibility and some power, but it's kind of confusing to learn at first. So if you've been watching any of my CSS battle videos, we typically want to use absolute positioning because relative, you have to keep in mind that the the way the page is laid out in the flow of the page is still going to be affected based on the width and height of your DOM elements. So that is why I typically use absolute positioning for all that stuff. And to further just kind of give you some examples, if we were to take box two, we can give it like a negative 50 and a negative 50, and that'll pull it up to the top left. I probably shouldn't have done that. I probably should have said 25, 25. Okay. And then we can also do positive numbers and that'll push it down. So another thing that's really cool with absolute positioning is since the outer yellow div has a relative positioning, I could position this box to the bottom of the yellow div by saying bottom of zero pixels. 
And then I can also move it to the bottom left by saying left of zero pixels. Or I can move it to the far right if I wanted to like this. Or again, I can move it to the top right if I have it positioned like so. So you can kind of like position the orange div or your absolute positioned elements based on the corners or sides of your parent container, which is really useful for a lot of different um, UI widgets. You know, I'll finish off with one last example. So let's say box two is actually nested inside of box one. All right, so we just have a bunch of divs that are kind of nested inside of each other. What we could do is let's say we wanted to be able to position this orange, this blue box around the page and we wanted the orange box to be inside of the blue box. So what I could do is I could put position relative on box one and that would make the orange box positioned relative or absolute inside of that blue box. And then I could just go ahead and change the position a little bit. And then we can start positioning box one to move it around the page as well. So I could say left of 50 pixels or 40 pixels and top of 20 pixels. So at this point you might say, okay, what do I need to do to be able to position this blue box absolute towards the pink box? Okay, how do I get this blue box up here? Well, one technique we typically do is we simply wrap the box in yet another div. So I could simply say, give that a position of absolute. And then I could just say, give this a position of relative. And now as I position box one, it's going to be positioned based on the orange, the, sorry, the yellow um, starting point. Now, the reason the yellow div kind of shrunk is because we changed the position of all the internal children. So there's no like computed height to any of these blue or orange uh, boxes anymore since they're both absolute. So the page doesn't really know how wide or how, how high to expand the yellow div. So let's just give it some fake height here, like 30, 300 pixels. But now my main point I was trying to get at is you can position the orange box with absolute positioning and you can kind of move it around the page like that. And you can continuously just pull up that relative positioning. Like let's say you wanted to position it based on the pink. Well, I just go over here and move it up one. And now we're being positioned based on the pink div. So I hope these little examples helped it all kind of click. I'm not sure if this was the best a way to describe position of absolute versus relative, but I think these little examples kind of help exemplify how you might want to use it in your day-to-day -day web development. So if you like this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Also be sure to subscribe if you're new to this channel. And like always, leave me your comments because I like responding to you guys and I like hearing your thoughts about these type of things. Have a good day and happy coding.